Today we are back with another Am I the A-hole video. If you don't know what r slash Am I the A-hole is, basically whenever people put in something happened in their life and we get to judge them and decide if they were in the right or wrong. Am I the A-hole for leaving the trip early because of my girlfriend's prank? I, 20 male, had a girlfriend, 20 female, of 8 months who I recently went on what was supposed to be a week-long beach trip to Queensland with her friends and family. She had been planning this trip for a long time and was looking forward to it, especially since I get to know them all. On the third day we planned to go river floating. When we got there I was looking through my bag before I went to change and couldn't find my trunks. I instead found a new navy blue pair. When I told her that she replied with oh yeah that's the extra one I packed in case you lost yours. I thought this was thoughtful of changing to them and then we headed down towards the river. We all got into our tubes and started floating off. About three minutes in I feel my suit getting baggier and I even noticed a piece of it falling off. I was disappointed that they were a cheap pair but I kept going. Is this a cheap pair of swimming shorts or literally falling apart? Once we hit rapids it got real though. I felt a sudden rush of cold water and I noticed my trunks had been torn clear off by the river. I stood up covering myself with just the last piece. Everyone else, about 15 of her friends and family, started to laugh. I was absolutely horrified. One of my biggest fears was being naked in public. And now I was completely nude with no way to get back. I'm assuming this prank is literally her making sure his clothes are dissolving in the water. Is this funny? I mean, maybe if you're around your own friends, but quite clearly he ain't finding it funny. I can't tell you how trapped and humiliated I felt. I had to spend the rest of the day with water up to my shoulders, feeling awkward and embarrassed the whole time. Whenever we were in shallow water, I was forced to stand up and walk exposed in front of them. They weren't pretty shoes. Her friends and parents made jokes and comments on my body as we went. Her young cousins made sure to comment on the shape and size of my junk when I couldn't cover myself also. Oh my god, wait, so her cousin and family are with her? Yeah, this is very, very weird. This isn't funny. When we got back to the beach, I had to run covering myself back to my towel. My day was completely ruined. I felt humiliated and angry. When we got back to our room, I was back in the clothes trying to forget the day when my girlfriend comes in giggling to herself. She asked me if I liked the new swim trunks. And when I asked what she meant, she told me she had ordered a prank dissolving pair in lounge and replaced my other one with it. I was absolutely livid. She had purposely exposed and violated me because she thought it'd be a good laugh. She even made sure not to pack another pair or a towel. I started yelling and she told me to calm down saying it was only a joke. Yeah but to her it might be a joke but quite clearly to you it isn't. I mean that right there is a literal nightmare to people. I mean whenever I'm having a bad dream it's usually got to do with me being naked in a public place where I can't find clothes. It maybe wouldn't have been as bad if it was just you and her you know on your own away from everyone else. But you were with her family, her friends, her cousins like that's weird. I left that night and I didn't call her the next day. She called screaming at me, acting like I was the one who had wronged her. Then she had worked hard for this trip and that I was being immature. But I didn't want to be around someone who would humiliate me, especially considering that her own family and friends would be present. I can understand that I ruined the trip for her, but it feels like her own fault. Hell yeah, it's her own fault. You're absolutely not the a-hole. She's a crap girlfriend. Yet again, if you're going to do pranks and someone do stupid pranks, like, oh my god, I'm going to scare you. Don't do pranks like that, because that's not a prank. Also, if that's out in public, I can't remember where they went pretty sure they did go on holiday. He could literally get arrested and put into jail for nudity. Not the a-hole. I hate this trend of humiliating people you're supposed to care for. Exactly. And yet again, like what she done just isn't a prank. That is humiliation. She quite clearly done that with a bad intention. I feel like a lot of people do that, especially whenever it comes to like little sly comments. Do you ever see someone online, especially on Twitter, make a comment about somebody and based on the reply, they will make it out like it was a joker if they were being serious. I always see people make comments about celebrities and then whenever people like race you and they're like, oh my God, guys, I'm just joking. Ha 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 ha. But it's quite clear that like it wasn't a joke they were meaning what they meant and you knew they were gonna get the follow-up and what it truly meant based on the reaction and the family joined in and making fun of original poster not the a-hole but time to go you deserve so much better exactly like it just isn't a funny prank is it yet again this is why i'm not a big fan of pranks i only like the fart ones and like jump scare ones but see ones like that especially if you're on holiday he could end up in jail i might an a-hole for refusing to honor my boyfriend's family's tradition my boyfriend eric 29 male and i 27 female have been dating for three years for context I've met his family and they're all friendly. We don't meet them very often because they live in my BF's home country. I don't want to reveal country names either for privacy reasons but my BF and I are of different nationalities and we both work in my country. The conflict happened during our last visit last weekend. We have been looking up houses to move in together and engagement rings. While we were having dinner we mentioned this to his family and it's a big step in our relationship for us. We're not engaged yet. His parents and brothers expressed their happiness for us. Then out of nowhere his younger sister-in-law asked so when is she going to take the test? Okay what is this? This test is this literally like the Hunger Games. I asked what test. In summary, BF's family has this tradition where the future mother-in-law tests future daughter-in-law to see if they're good enough for her sons. Apparently his mother and aunts went for the same test. The test includes how clean they can keep a home, how well they can cook, their manners, etc. Basically life skills most people learn from childhood. I found it ridiculous because one, if I'm not good enough for my boyfriend, he should be the one deciding it. And two, if I don't fit their targeted category, in my mum's words, you can't be good, S-A-H-W. I won't lie, I don't know 
what that means. I'm assuming that's S-A-H-W. I actually don't know. And S-A-H-M. If you can't be a good homemaker and she wants to make sure of that. Yet again, I don't know what that is. So if you do know, comment down below. To be clear, his mom and all three of his brother's wives are S-A-H-M's. And although I respect their choice, I'm not quitting my career. And did not under any circumstances make my BF think I could compromise in that. I hate house chores and I would rather buy homemaking gadgets and hire staff no matter the cost than have to do chores myself. I told my BF's mum all of this and it caused an argument that eventually ruined dinner and an extension our visit. BF doesn't care whether I'm a working wife or a SAHW but he thinks I should have just done the test because it's just the test and it's not like they would reject me if I failed it. He thinks it's a fun tradition that everyone was looking forward to and I should have gone along with it anyways. I'm actually gonna look up SAHW because it sounds like housewife. Oh, stay at home wife. SAHW stay at home wife. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so all of his siblings' wives are stay at home wives. Okay, that kind of makes a bit more sense now. My boyfriend thinks I'm the a-hole and suggests that I make this post. If I really am the a-hole, I'm sure you guys will let me know, so am I. Okay, so I'm gonna go with absolutely not. You're not the a-hole. At the end of the day, if you don't wanna be a housewife, you don't have to be a housewife or a stay at home mom. You don't even need to have kids. I mean, I'm assuming you don't have kids. At the end of the day, you shouldn't put your career on the sideline to impress your man's family. What does a stay at home mom even do? Like, if you don't have a child, what are you gonna do? Just watch TV all day? I mean, to be fair, Luke, he wanna do that. Here's what some Redditors had to say. He thinks it's a fun tradition for women marrying into the family to be judging their skills in traditional old-fashioned gender conforming roles. Fine, let him take the test. He can rotate the tires, change the oil, and maybe rework the transmission on the car and install a new muffler while he's at it. Then he can perform a series of tests of lifting heavy objects, hire his plumbing skills. He's gonna need to know how to fix a leaky faucet. Your father and brothers and male friends can judge him on his manliness and decide if he is prepared to be a proper husband. He might also need to prove he makes enough money to support you for when you have to stay at home and perform all these wifey duties. What an obnoxious family, not the a-hole. That person basically said every single thing that I was thinking, but just typed it out. Am I the a-hole for telling my father and his wife that it's too late to compromise and I don't want to engage in therapy with them? I'm a 16 female and I have two brothers, 18 male and 14 male. We lost our mum when we were three, five and seven and our dad remarried when we were four, six and eight. It felt like they had known each other for about a month, but it's possible they were together longer. About a month after mum died, dad was in a widow's and widower's group and that's how he met his wife, Beth. Beth lost her husband and no kids. When they got married, they sat us down and told us Beth was going to adopt us. My older brother and I objected, but we were ignored. Around that time, we heard some extended family try to talk to them out of it as well, saying we would be taken care of if anything happened to our father. No need to go through with the adoption. Beth told them she was our mother now and the adoption needed to happen. We spoke to a social worker and the judge before the adoption happened. Initially, our request was rejected based on our conversations, but then they came up with a story that we'd have nobody else to take care of us and our family had already said they wouldn't raise us if anything happened to dad and it was done. Older brother and I never liked it. Younger brother didn't really know any better but age seven was saying he wished he wasn't adopted as well. He could have been copying us but he says he really feels that way so dot dot dot. Okay well I'm getting a wee bit confused so I'm assuming that like it's basically like the dad has just got remarried and the stepmom like the new mom is adopting the children or basically taking over the role of the other mom. I don't know I'm getting a wee bit confused I'm dyslexic. We have new birth certificates ever since the adoption and her name is in the place of mother. Oh wait I think I see where this is going. Okay so they've literally been given brand new birth certificates so they're acting like they've like wiped their biological mum off the face of the earth. Found that out when I gave my mum's name in school one day and had to bring in my birth certificate and saw Beth's name. My brothers had no idea that that had happened either. It pissed off my older brother so much that he told Beth he hoped she would die and we could be adopted again since she was far more replaceable than mum. That incident made Beth and our family put him into therapy with them. That lasted for two years until he moved out last year. He then asked our maternal grandparents to adopt him since he couldn't find a way to reverse the adoption. Recently Beth and my father figured out that I want to do the same and so does my younger brother. Beth broke down and said she just wanted the chance to be a mother and wanted us to love her back. My father suggested they do therapy with me and my brother, separate sessions with each of us and that we try to work out a compromise. I told him it was too late for that. They had already a raised mum and nothing they could say would make me feel different about what they did. I mean yeah it's like I can understand it might be tough if you get like a new step mum but it's the fact that they went out of their way to basically erase your biological mom to act like she never really gave birth to you. That's not how it's meant to go, is it? I told Beth we were never her children and she would need to accept the fact she was never going to be loved back. My father told me that wasn't true. We could still work something out. Like have our grandparents adopt us but call him and Beth mum and dad and let them still be parents and grandparents in the future. When I said there was no room for compromise and it was too late, they said I was being so unfair, I'm an a-hole. Okay, so I felt like that was a wee bit confusing and I wasn't really put down that well in the typing bit. Basically, this family had a mum and dad. The mum sadly died and the dad went to a widow's group and met 
a new woman. They eventually, you know, started dating, got married, and then that new mum adopted the children with the dad. I won't lie, I didn't know that that was a thing. I thought, you know, if someone just gets married, you know, like, they just become like a step-parent. But then Beth has decided to go out of her way to try to erase the mum from the kid's life, acting like she was never really there and that she's their actual mum that gave birth to them, which just isn't the case she's a step-mom. So I'm gonna say, no, you're not the a-hole. At the end of the day, like, that's unfair for Beth to do that. She's basically saying, oh yeah, your mum was never really there. Like, that's a wee bit weird. Not the a-hole, but your father and Beth sure are. Beth is the kind of step-mom that gives step-parents a bad name. She wanted to adopt you and your brothers because she just wanted the chance to be a mother. So she hijacked the three of you and promptly erased your mum's memory. Exactly, that's what I was thinking, because the adopting bit wasn't making any sense. Like, she just is a step-mom. But your father is even worse because he allowed all of this to happen over your wishes. And so quickly after your mum's death, it sounds like he just wanted to get a replacement mum in the door as quickly as possible so the family could regain a semblance of normalcy. But in the process, he prioritised Beth's agenda over his kids' feelings and well-being. Mother-child bonds and love can't be forced, and this is what he tried to do. Exactly, so yeah, you're not the a-hole. Beth is just a control freak by the sounds of it. Yes, also the fact he came up with the lie that none of our family would take care of us if he died, and we'd end up in foster care. My brother and I heard with our own ears they would take care of us. My dad wanted it to be Beth, and I knew we wouldn't choose her. Exactly, at the end of the day, you know, your mum is dead. In a way, Beth is your stepmom, but she's not acting like one. Yet again, stepmoms can sometimes be so evil. I really do feel bad for kids, you know, where their original parents break up and then they get a step, you know, parent. And that step parent just is so hard to get along with because I've seen it with my own eyes. But oh my god, Beth seems like an absolute nightmare. Am I the a-hole for insisting my sister-in-law to visit us more when she is a busy resident doctor and she says she can? My sister-in-law married and my brother is a resident physician who works 60 to 80 hours weeks and frequently works one or both days of the weekend. Her residency is a seven hour drive from where me, my husband and my baby girl, one and a half year old live. 60 to 80 hours a week? Lord almighty, that's long. My brother and I were always very close growing up and even lived in the same apartment and later same city. We were never more than 20 to 30 minutes away from each other. I got married and had my baby and he moved seven hours away to be with his fiance now why? Pretty soon after I had my baby, it was devastating for me as I always had pictured us being close and him being involved as an uncle. Sister-in-law works 6 a.m. to 5 30, 6 to 7 days a week, but does have some golden weekends where she has Saturday and Sunday off. She usually has one per month and then she has three weeks of vacation, never over Christmas or New Year's holidays. All I'm getting from this is that this poor sister-in-law is absolutely being worked to the bone. During those one weekend a month that she has completely off, her and my brother either stay at home because she needs to relax or will drive two hours to see her family. During the three weeks of vacation, which she is only able to take one week at a time, they went on a one week long trip to Hawaii. A one week long trip to Cancun with her family and then one week where they just visited her family two hours away. They haven't made the trip to visit us more than one to two times a year. As they say the drive is too hard with the limited time off. She has and she's usually too tired to come anyways but not too tired for Hawaii or Cancun. Well I mean I'm gonna be completely honest I would much rather get in a plane to Hawaii and be able to relax than drive seven hours to see someone. They always ask my parents and us to visit them during holidays. She works so at least we can be together and she will join every day after five. But it's hard for us to travel with one and a half year old. My parents have to split time visiting there and visiting us and we need them for childcare. I've been asking my brother and sister-in-law to visit us more even though I know her schedule is busy and my brother got frustrated with me. When I asked him to visit alone, he said she needs him because the heavy workload has been really mentally straining on her and quoted how resident physicians have a really high depression rate and basically called me the a-hole. I mean, I think she is literally working 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. six to seven days a week. She's working like 80 hours. Of course, she could be bloody depressed. I feel it's unfair we have to visit all the time considering we have a one-year-old and also both work full time and feel they should balance better to visit us rather than just vacation. I'm at a hole for insisting. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna say, yeah, this woman literally works loads and you know, the very little time that she gets off, she's allowed to do whatever she wants. If she wants to go on holiday, she can. I can understand you want to see your brother more because obviously you and him were very close growing up. But I'm gonna say, yeah, you are a bit of an a-hole. You're the a-hole. You don't have to travel to them if it's too hard for you. But you come across as really judgmental and lacking in compassion for how they choose to spend their limited free time. Asking them to travel seven hours each way for a visit on the rare Saturday and Sunday she has office and reasonable. Exactly like literally seven hours there, seven hours back, that's 14 hours. That would be 14 hours of driving for probably not even 24 hours of time together including sleep hours. You say they do make the trip about twice a year and that seems reasonable given these circumstances. Exactly like it's not like they're not visiting you, they basically are. You know they're visiting you once and twice a year, that's like kind of good, well I mean it's not really a lot. But keep in mind they do live quite a distance away from you. I mean I personally don't think you're a bad person, I think you're just not really looking at it in the way you should be. Can I just say that as someone who went through a miserable residency, 
I was instantly protective of the sister-in-law upon reading this post. I've been in similar shoes and they are painful to wear. To have a family member demand my time like this when I was drowning in work would have felt like someone peeling off my already sunburnt skin excruciating. I was pleasantly surprised to see how many Redditors empathise with the resident's experience. I knew the sister-in-law likely won't ever see this, but this mildly traumatised former resident, it can be so much better on the other side, is very grateful for the kindness. I mean, yeah, look, it's just one of them situations where like, you know, you kind of have to look at it from another perspective. I can understand you want to see your brother more and his wife. However, it's not physically possible for them to literally drive seven hours there, seven hours back with their working schedule. And also, there's a FaceTime call. Just pop them up and FaceTime and have a chat for about an hour. Well, anyways, guys, that is some post from r slash Amy to a-hole. If you want to see me do more videos like this, let me know definitely will. Press the bigger subscribe and see you all tomorrow for another video.